besides Amblyseus Sversky, who featured in the previous video, Phytocyalus persimilis is another species of predatory mite that is used by greenhouse farmers for biocontrol. Persimilis is well adapted to survive in its habitat, and that makes it good at its job as a biocontrol agent, where it should find and kill the spider mite pest and thereby protect our crops. The reason for this perfect adaptation is that its ancestors survived the course of natural selection. Natural selection is the process whereby organisms that are better adapted to their environment tend to survive and produce more offspring. The recipe for natural selection is variation plus heritable traits plus a limit on population growth. Firstly, there has to be variation in the population. This means that individuals have slightly different traits or characteristics. These variable traits must be heritable, meaning that the genes coding for these traits are transmitted from parent to offspring. And finally, there are limits on population growth imposed by the environment. Examples are competition for the same resources, predators, parasites and illnesses, toxins, or habitat and climate changes. These limits are also called selection pressures because they determine who can survive and have offspring versus who cannot or less well. This ability to survive to a reproductive age, find a mate and produce offspring is called fitness. Traits that are found in individuals with higher fitness become more abundant in the population over time, making natural selection one of the drivers of evolution. Our predatory mite Persimilis is one of the end products of this natural selection process that took place on its ancestor populations. But our mite has some trouble to control spider mites when the climate is very hot and dry, which is the case in greenhouses in Spain or Greece. Scientists are looking for a solution, a persimilis with different traits, adapted to handle the drought and the heat in these greenhouses. The goal is not to adapt this individual mite itself, but future generations of its offspring, using selective breeding. Selective breeding, which is also called artificial selection, works similar to natural selection, except that the fitness traits are not determined by nature, but humans provide the selection pressure. Therefore, the recipe for selective breeding is variation plus heritable traits plus human choice. Selective breeding is used in animal breeding and agriculture, and it was started about 10,000 years ago, when humans switched from being hunter-gatherers to being farmers. Humans select for individuals within a species to best fit their needs. This can be done for different purposes, such as for food, for work, or even for beauty. Selective breeding roughly goes like this. From a mixed population, parents with the desired characteristics are selected, and then they are bred together. This is then repeated with their offspring, again and again, for many generations, until all offspring have the desired characteristics. In the case of our predatory mite, Phytocellulus persimilis, Selective breeding has already been used in the past to select for a persimilis breed that is resistant to higher temperatures. Scientists are now trying to select for a persimilis that is also resistant to drought, enabling them to do their work in drier countries. <laughs>